this is Roger with uh, Christmas on Ivy Creek. Thought I'd do a quick video. I got the jig from uh, Jason at Cisk Lights. And I thought I'd do a quick video on kind of how this works and kind of how I'm doing things and maybe it'll help somebody else use this thing as well. First thing first, when you're doing your pipe, you're gonna to want to draw a straight line down the pipe so that you have a guideline to follow. Um, the easiest way I've found to do this, and this was uh, inspired by somebody else on one of the X-Lights uh, Zoom sessions, was tie two of them together, flat on the floor like this. Uh, I'm using zip ties to do that. And uh, kind of hold them down and keep them straight and draw your line right in between them. I'll kind of show that real quick. So, you can kind of see I've got mine tied together. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take your mark, take your little Sharpie, just go like this. It's kind of hard to do this one handed. But while you're doing it, ideally, what you want to do is you're going to want to kind of keep these squeezed together because as you get further down, you'll see it kind of part right here and you're going to want to keep that you're going to keep that squeeze together so that you can mark it I don't know how easy that is to see but if you look you'll see a nice straight line right down your pipe once you're done now when I got the jig one of the things that uh, Jason did say that is you want to try and support the pipe on both ends coming and going coming into the jig and going back out again that way it helps with it helps with the bottom twist because even though the top won't twist you can get bottom twist but I mean it's a lot less likely with this jig Jason did a great job with the design uh, I've already I, I, I got it yesterday at like four o'clock and by eight o'clock I had banged out four pieces of pipe and nothing flat so um, I'll kind of show you how this works real quick now when you get the jig, you'll notice that there are three holes across the top and then there's a line here. The line here is meant to keep this line on the, on the pipe that you drew in line with this. Um, further down inside, you'll see the two fingers and we'll show you what that, with how that works later on here in just a few minutes. But to get your pipe started and the supports, I just grabbed a couple of pieces of scrap, popped a quick hole in it, and uh, clamped them to a couple of saw horses for a, a, a roughly a stable uh, support system. So, kind of make sure you guys can see this. How you're gonna do this is, I'm using a, a half inch Forstner bit uh, my it's my preference. Some people use step bits for 12 mil step bits or whatever you, you know, whatever you want to work with. I've tried both. I personally like the Forstner bit better. I think the fit on the pixels is better. But again, this is personal preference. So, all you're going to do is you're going to take your, you're going to take your key, your chuck key. You're going to stick it. There's a hole right here in the middle of the emblem or the middle of the, his logo. And stick your chuck key in here just like this. One of the things you want to make sure of is that you're you're relative, you know, you're pretty level here and you're you're straight into your jig that direction. So something to be thinking about. So like I said, first thing you want to do is when you put this in, you get your chuck key here. You're gonna plug this in like this. And I'm sorry about my voice by the way, I'm kind of fighting a sinus infection. You're gonna line this up with the mark on top. This is this hole right here, so you can kind of keep an eye on it, make sure that you make sure you stay lined up. And then, honestly, after the first hole, this really becomes really, really simple. I had to fix my line, but it was off. So, you got your pipe, get your line, get your line up. Put it all the way against the chuck key right there. Make sure your hole's lined up. Turn your, turn your oh, uh, one thing I forgot to mention. 
before you do any of this, get your jig set up on on your press and make sure you're you're aligned here because if you're not aligned with that hole you'll you'll chew up the hole your spacing and your your holes will be off and you could end up damaging the jig <clears throat> it i gave it probably a good i probably put in 20 minutes just to make sure that the jig itself was lined up and uh and and, and exactly where i needed it to be so take the extra time don't be in a hurry once you get the flow of this, this goes really, really fast. Um, Jason made mention that, you know, you can knock out one of these in like 10 minutes. So let me, let me kind of get into this. I'll show you how this runs. So that's hole number one. And the other thing I will caution you on too is make sure when you're doing this, now especially with the Forrester bit, I don't know, I'm, the, the step bit probably not so much, but with the Forrester bit, it makes absolutely sure you go all the way through. Because what I've I've seen with mine, with the step bit, I'm sorry, the Forrester bit rather, is you get you get little pieces like this that the Forrester bit will cut out. And if you don't go all the way through, it, it'll kind of lodge, it'll lodge itself in the, in the hole at the bottom, and then you can't move your pipe to the next one. You should never have to force this. If you're forcing it, then there's something wrong. Okay, so that's hole number one. Now, if you listen, you remember the fingers up here. If you listen, there's where it kind of engages, and you hear that snap. Okay, that's, that's now there's, there, there are two different fingers in here. One is round, one is diamond shaped. The round one helps you with your spacing, and this one helps with the diamond shape one that tends to help with the anti-twist. Because if you notice, once you get in here, there's a little bit of give here, but once you get into both fingers, this thing really doesn't have a whole lot of give to it. Let me go ahead and get the next hole done. This is kind of one of the bad parts about a Forestner bit, but you know what? I like it better, so to each his own, right? All right, so the one thing, I, I, one thing I'll show you this is, is this is where we're going to engage both fingers. And the one thing you're going to want to listen to is you're going to listen for two pops. Now, once you hear both of them pop like that, kind of just give a little tug back toward your left again. You don't have to pull hard, just enough to make sure it's engaged, because like I said, those, those fingers come up like this. You want to make sure those holes are engaged back against those two pins. <clears throat> this way, and you notice there's not a whole lot of twists left in this anymore. But uh, once you do this, your spacing's right, the holes across the bottom are straight, it stays aligned, and honestly, I, I had absolutely no problems punching a, a 10 foot piece of PVC full of holes in nothing flat. Let me go ahead and run through this. One thing I will add, um, when you're doing these holes, do yourself a favor and uh, try and keep them, you know, stop every little, little bit and keep them clean. You don't want uh, you don't want the shavings to get in here and kind of throw things off or, or make it difficult to get, keep your holes, you know, keep your, your jig centered and straight. So I make it a habit of about every few I stop and clean the forester off and clean the, clean the inside of here and stuff off. So rather than make you guys watch me do an entire 10 foot piece full of PV, full of holes in PVC, I'll kind of show you one that I've already done. 
They're really straight, really nice. And if you look down here, this was a problem I was having. I could not get them straight all the way down. I kept getting, I kept getting curved, getting them off center. But if you look, those are pretty well spot on. So this was a great jig. Thank you, Jason, for creating this thing. Uh, if you haven't picked one up yet, Jason's got them out for print or he can print them for you. Uh, if, if you're doing this, this is a great way to go. Thanks. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Thanksgiving, Yom Kippur, whatever you feel, whatever you celebrate. Take care, and we'll uh, catch you later.